Okay, so we have spent a considerable amount of time on the subject of Shemaya Ke'one. I hope I can pledge to you tonight that this is the last year about the sugi of Shemaya Ke'one, and then we'll go back to an actual Gemara year on the daf, cycling through, learning Rashi and Tosfot and Rishonim, etc. But tonight, I want to finish the sugya, if you could ever say finish, about such a vast and intricate sugya that actually impacts us uh, fairly frequently uh, in different aspects of our Judaism. Let me start just by reviewing a little bit of the nomenclature, because Art brought it up in an email to me, and I want to just clarify. The expression shomea ke'one, the word response, ke'one, in this context means it's as if you repeated it, you responded to it. It's based on the fact that the Gemara in Sukkah Lamed Chet Amad Bet has a list of the Hilchata Gibarata, all the different halachot, which really in this case meant the different minhagim, about how um, hala was recited. And Rava tells us the various types of ways that hala was recited in his community, in his shul, probably. All of these were all an amalgam. We're doing all of these, uh, or almost all of these, in Hallel nowadays as well. Sometimes we're responding, sometimes we're just repeating, sometimes we're saying the same thing uh, alongside the Shlech Tzibur. We talked about the idea that the Gemara in Lamed Chet Amid Bed and Sukkah is bound up with the Gemara Masachet Sota on Daf Lamed, which tells us the various ways, and some machloket, how did Shirat Hayam go? Was it uh, everyone singing together? Was it responsive? Was it responsive with a refrain? Was it perhaps some said a, a piece and then there was, it was like a call and response. Um, there were all different possibilities. And that's where he had the notion of being one, I involved nune to respond to something. Shomeh ke'one in our Gemara, Lamed Chet Amad Bet, had two sources. Number one was a source within the context of Hallel. And that source had to do with the words, Baruch Haba, B'Shem Hashem. Shliach Tzibur would say the first two words, the Kal would respond the next two words. There was no repetition of the words Baruch Haba by the people. We don't exactly do this uh, in our Hallel at all anymore uh, because of the way life goes and communities run. So we have the closest we have is like the Hodu set up, the, the four lines of Hodu, but not really because we end up repeating, the Minig ends up being, we repeat the same line that the person said, that Shlech Tzibur said, yeah? Or we say the next line, whatever it is. But we're all we all end up saying everything. But that was one source was Hallel. Source number two was found in Psukim from Malachim Bet. A Sefer Torah is found. It's read aloud in, in, in some kind of dramatic uh, reading of the of the of the uh, the, the found uh, Sefer Torah. Uh, uh, everyone is there, but when it's reported to us moments later in the uh, in the Navi, it tells us that Yoshio Melech himself was the reader, <clears throat> excuse me, of those words. And the Gemara says, well, he isn't the reader of those words. It actually says pretty explicitly that he was listening in. Shafan was the one who was reading them. And there the Gemara says, oh, Mikan L'Shamea Ke'one. Eli, uh, Yoshio, the king, didn't personally read it. The scribe read it. He listened mm -hmm. in. It's like he said it. Shomea, he was listening, Ke'one, as if he had responded to it, i.e. either by completing the line or by repeating what was said in either case. That principle is was the focus of our discussion over a number of weeks. Uh, we talked about the basic approaches that undergird the various uh, machlokot that come up. I won't rehash them all now. We simply don't have time. But the two... Uh, bright light, bright lights, let's say, in the discussion, in terms of the formulation, like what's going on, came to us from either the Beit HaLevi or the Chazon Ish. The Beit HaLevi maintains that when you hear someone else saying the words, you're listening, you're speaking. You're just not moving your lips. That person is moving their lips, but it's as if you are personally speaking. The Chazon Ish disagreed. He thought when you hear someone else, you're not saying the words, they're saying the words. What's going on is they're creating a connection, some kind of a linkage, maybe even a, a unification, uses the word in one place, 
between the mashmia, the one who makes the sound, and the shomea, and you're sort of piggybacking on whatever that other person is saying, and in a certain way, they're kind of representing you. We dodged around and moved around the word shlichut, even though there is a Mishnah in Rosh Hashanah that mentions that the shliach tzibor is not just an emissary of the community, but maybe has some kind of a din of shlichut being like a shliach, and shlucho shel adam kemoto, the emissary of person is like that person. We weren't so comfortable going too far into that realm because the more we say that, the less we actually need you to be there. If you appoint someone, there are a bunch of examples. You appoint someone to uh, do uh, uh, a bitzel chametz for you. So you don't have to be there when they do it. You could tell people, oh, could you please pray for me? I'm, I'm not going to daven today. Just daven for me and leave. You go home. Someone else is davening for you. What do you have to be in the picture? That doesn't really work. Now, instead, because the mitzvah of Dibur, you have to actually say it. So, well, what is that connection? So the Chazanish didn't really call it a shlichut per se. He thought it was a yachas, a, the hityaches, between uh, the, the hityachasut, the relationship between the, the two people who were the, um, specifically, the, the, um, um, the, the mashmia and the shemeya. And then the idea that there is uh, some element here of, uh, uh, of connection. So you're doing, that person's being motzi for you. And then uh, a connection uh, for, as far as, as, as what's going on can't really be called a shlichut. You have to be there. You have to hear it. You're connected to that person. Um, in the Beit HaLevi's rendering, uh, their voice is really your voice. It's, been, it's that, that closely identified. So it's like you're saying it. Your lips happen not to be moving. You're doing the part of Dibor called Shmiya. There's two ways you can express Dibor. Dibor is vocal or Dibor is auditory. So you're doing the auditory part of it. Someone else is doing the Shmiya part of it. So what we talked about, well, there are all sorts of nafka minot that we dealt with in getting to try to uh, uh, figure out all of the back and forth. This is all just review of different permutations and situations that could come up. I'm going to come up, I'm going to discuss tonight a few situations where, in fact, Shemaya Ke'ona may fail, may not work, and, well, and they're, they're practical. We'll get to them in a minute. But one last piece of review is the Minchat Asher. Uh, actually, before I do that, I was actually going to speed through a whole review and then put the dedication in. But let me put the dedication in uh, 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 tonight. Now, um, I want to thank, uh, I think Sully must be on the call with us, right? Sully, are you there? Did he not come on? Oh, Sully. Yeah, Sully's uh, not here. So, no, Sully and Min are sponsoring tonight. I thought I get the housekeeping, a little bit of review, and then the new shear, but I don't want to, in case the shear goes long, uh, on a limited time. Tonight's shear is sponsored in memory of Julius Berger, Yechiel Natan Hakohen, Yechiel uh, Natan Ben Shraga Dov Hakohen, and Shabbat Shavon Aliyah. And we Amen. thank them very much. Um, Amen. Amen. It's on his ninth, his ninth, uh, ninth uh, yard site, um, which is actually uh, just uh, just now. So I appreciate it very much. The Minchat Asher, Rav Asher Weiss, the aforementioned, God willing, I'm going to see soon, has this essay, which appears in several places. For those who want to look it up, it's in the Minchat Asher and Sefer Bamidbar and Parshat Naso. Uh, why in Parshat Naso? Because Birkat Kohanim is there. And Birkat Kohanim has a particular halacha about it called Kol Ram. Kol Ram is a detail in the mitzvah of, uh, uh, of Birkat Kohanim. But Kol Ram tells us, uh, according to most, that it is impossible to use the principle of Shemea Ke'one in order to fulfill it. So you cannot have one Kohen representing other Kohanim, uh, according to this approach, uh, because Kol Ram means a special din uh, that is related to Birkat Kohanim. Someone can be your voice, but they can't be your Kol Ram. You have to do that on your own, and therefore nobody can represent you in Birkat Kohanim. That was basically the position of the Beit HaLevi, and therefore a back and forth about the community of Trieste, in Italy, where actually <clears throat> at some point that seems to have been the Minog, they would appoint one Kohen to represent all the other Kohanim. All the Kohanim would go up, but one would recite Yivarechecha, Hashem, etc. So uh, that's frowned upon. It's saying, well, that might have been the Minog, but it doesn't add up, certainly according to the sheet of the Beit Levi, because they're of the Kol Ram elements. That's one place the essay appears. An almost identical essay appears in the volume on Purim, um, on the Moadim, Hanukkah Purim, Dalit Somot, and there, it's on the subject of the Aseret Bnei Haman in the Megillah, where many communities have a minog. 
Many people in the communities have a minute that when the reader of the Megillah gets to the uh, Serapine, how many reads it? Fast, 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 fast. And the minute is, binish, uh, the, the proper way to read it is achat in one breath. That's a particular uh, uh, um, um, obligation. It's a detail in the reading of the Megillah. So for that, the Tzafnat Panach, the Raga Chava writes, based on the, this whole approach, that cannot be accomplished by the reader for the people. That cannot work through Shemekah Ona. The rest of the Megillah does, but not that. And therefore, the Minig is that everybody, even if you're holding a Chumash, everybody says the Serpent Muhammad fast, 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 and then Shima Achat. Even though it's not one of the beautiful four Psukim, it's because it has a particular Halacha connected to it. Again, this all bound up Shemekah Ona. So an almost identical uh, um, essay with the same 36 uh, permutations and examples of Nafka Minot between the Beit HaLevi or Chazon Ish, how it would play out, uh, uh, goes it, it, over over a number of pages. And what the Minchat Asher basically comes up with, and this is sort of just summarizing what we saw inside uh, last uh, last time, is, is the following. Um, he basically says, each of these approaches has a merit, but also a certain... Um, liability or weakness, I need to plug the hole. I'm, I'm going to make a third example of what a third approach to what Shemekia Ona might be. And I'm going to try to, it's basically going to be an amalgam of Beit Levi and the Chazon Ish. But he says, if I am successful, I will have answered all of the different stirot that came up between them. So what he basically said, I'm, I'm paraphrasing what we had read inside, but he he basically says, and there's also a, a shiurim that he has a a Torahbase.org where he talks about this. So it basically says, um, Shomea Ka'one is not that listening is the same thing as saying the words. It's not actually exactly the same, but rather the Shmia is as if you responded. Shmia is Ke'one, but it's not, it's not like your Ona. It's not the same thing. Um, but it's not that your Yotz in the Bracha uh, of your of your friend that he's your shaliach. Rather, he explains as follows: um, the the notion of speech is that there is a something that's spoken, and the speech only matters when there is someone who hears that speech spoken. In other words, the, if there's no shmia, the dibur in a certain way doesn't really exist. They're intertwined in their very nature. Shmia is bound up with dibur. And therefore, he says, if you look at the Gemara in Sukkah, I'd like, I love that it's just right out of the Gemara in Sukkah. The Gemara in Sukkah had two sources. The first source certainly was bound up with the Minag. Baruch haba, b'shem Hashem. So there's a call and a response. We get that. But what's the second source doing there? Rav Asher Weiss pointed out that Shemea Ke'one is using this as an example. It, the example taken is an example that was not a Dvar Mitzvah. When that Torah was being read by Shafan, he wasn't performing a mitzvah. He was just reading something, right? Oh, he was Talmud Torah. Yeah, but he was reading it out loud. And then the Navi says, oh, Yoshio HaMelech read it. One read it, it's like the other one read it. Shemek Ka'one itself seems to be a dual right to principles. We'll see tonight, according to many, it'll work for Kriyat Shema. If it works for Kriyat Shema, how could its full source somehow be in Malachim Bet which is Divrei Kabbalah, meaning it's from the world of the Nevi'im. It's not in the Sefer Torah. Secondly, right, this mitzvah, again, it was not a, well, I should say, I said it backwards. That was number two. Number one, again, is it wasn't a, a kriya of mitzvah. It was a kriya of reshut. It's not to be yotze a kriya. It was like a mitzvah. Was Shafan read it. And the Navi says, well, really, Yoshio read it. Not really, but it's like he read it because he heard it. And number two, Shmei Ka'ona is really supposed to be a Doraita principle. If it works for being Makaya mitzvah Doraita, so how could the source be in the Vim? Said the Minchat Asher, we're learning here about the interaction between Shmia and Dibur from these psukim. It's telling us that listening becomes as if the person said the words that he listened to. Chazal developed a concept of Shomea Ke'one throughout all of the halachic system. Misvara. It makes sense. And therefore they had two sources. One was here's a source from this is what Jews do. Uh, which, of course, initially takes its, well, really, but which takes its roots, of course, where? In the Gemara and Sota. That's what Tosva tells us. Go look in the Gemara and Sota at Kriyat Yamsuf, where the prayer leader, quite literally, 
Moshe Rabbeinu. He's the Shaliach Tzibur. He's leading them. So it might be he set apart, they set apart. All right. So if you look at, um, that's, the, uh, that's what the Chazanish is writing. Hishtatfut, hitchabrut, hitachdut, between the Shomea, the one who's listening, and the one who's speaking. If you understand it this way, you have a certain approach where you start to understand, ah, so there's the connection between the two, uh, but, but unlike the Chazanish that you're just jumping on the bandwagon with the other person, the connection that's being forged is in fact, as a result of that connection, that person is doing the speaking, but you're hearing it is as if you're saying it. He took apart from the Beit Levi and apart from the Chazan Ish, and he basically rolled them together and he said, now I can explain all of these 36 different permutations using this, this, uh, this logic. We don't have time to go see them all, but let me get, turn to some practical uh, uh, um, uh, elements. And the question came in, you know, um, uh, oh, sorry. So just the holdover question. Do we actually possibly everyone has to say a serpent helmet on their own? No, it depends on the minig, uh, on what your minig is. Um, and um, it's, I think the Lushan of the Rama is something like Yeshomrim, something like that. I do not believe it is the minig ha'olam by any means. And one of the ways you know that, by the way, is in many shuls, I don't want to say every shul, but many shuls, there's no pause. Like the, the, the schlitz just goes fast, the balkore, right? So those old, it's not required, would say, well, the Neshima Achad itself was a, um, was a, was a Minig Yisrael. It's not, uh, it's not going to uh, Aser, or rather Apostle, you're, you're reading all together. So, uh, okay, that person read it for you. Also, they tend to read it so incredibly quickly that unless you're adept at doing it, you know, the Vaisata, and the da, 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 it's, it's very hard to hold cup. And then you run into other problems, which is if you haven't said it fast enough, how are you going to keep going when they get to the next word, unless you have a kosher Megillah? You got to hear everything. So whatever your minute was last year, that's what you should do this year. That's what I would say. Okay. So now, a Kriyat Shema. And uh, Arden sent me another email uh, asking about Kriyat Shema. You know, what, what about Kriyat Shema? You know, uh, does, it, um, does, does, does it work? Can the Shliach Tzibur just say Shema for everybody? You're listening. Shema Ka'one. Now, when I say Shema Ka'one, I'm not talking about a bracha where you say Amen. And literally mean you're just listening to what they're saying. Amen is I accept, I affirm, I receive the blessing you just said, and I I I I I jump onto it. That's for sure. We're talking about the Kriyat Shema of the Shliach Tzibor. Just kind of uh, just kind of says kind of says it. So uh, you have different um, different uh, approaches, uh, different people. Rabbi uh, Matt says yeah, it works. The Maram Al Shaker. Quoted, uh, uh, quoted by the uh, Elias Mimat says, no, it doesn't work. Because if you look carefully, the only way that this Kriyat Shema by the Shliach Tzibur could work for another individual to be Motzi someone is if they're not a Bucky. Meaning they have no idea how to read. Then you could help them. But if they can, they must say it by themselves. If not, uh, you know, if they're not a Bucky, they don't know, then, then you would really need um, uh, uh, a 10, you'd need a, min, a minion. And then the Shliach Tzibur is leading the minion. That could happen. But otherwise, you couldn't just have someone just say Shema. You say to somebody, like, I'm just too tired. You just say Shema for me. That doesn't work. If you know how to say it, you have to do it. The Gra quoted the Shnot Elio. I got this by the Otsar Yunim of the Masifta Gemara, just full disclosure. I didn't, I haven't seen all these sources, every single one of them inside. So I don't want to mislead anybody in about that. But he basically, the, the, the Gra is quoted in the Shnot Elio as saying that actually he thinks that Kriyat Shema, it would never work for Kriyat Shema because the mission is very careful when it refers to Shema, it says Korin in the plural, meaning every individual. That's right after it, it mentions in Brachot that for the Birchot Kriyat Shema, it says, B'Shachar Mivarech Shtayim Lefanev Achat Acharea. It refers to Shliach Tzibor uh, leading in Shachri, two Brachas before and one after. But then when it comes to Shema, it says Korin in the plural, implying that it's for each individual, right? So uh, if Kriyat Shema Korin, the Mishnah goes out of its way to use the language in the plural, it implies each and every individual has to do it. And therefore, the idea that one person can be Motzi another is impossible, impossible. The Rashba and the Shailu Tshuva, the Ritva, says every individual has to recite the Shema on their own. The Ritva uses the same logic. He says, if you look at the beginning of Masachet Megillah, uh, um, the Masachet Megillah, Daf Bet Amadalaf starts about, about Megillah Nikrate, 
The Megillah is read. That's in the singular because one person ends up reading it for everybody. But when it comes to Shema, it's Korin. Uh, at the beginning of Brachot, maybe it's like uh, Korin, Kriyat Shema Shal Arvit, Korin. So that's the plural. So Korin, okay. So that means it's everybody's got to do it for themselves. Now, the Ritva and the Ran do allow the Ritva and Rosh Hashanah, the Ran, they allow that a person who's not a Bucky can hear it from someone else, but that's because they're stuck. They don't know how to do it. And it's not just a mechanism, I just prefer Shema Ka'ona. If you don't know how to do it, so then you could be Yotze through somebody else. But it, it's it's Talui on whether you're going to be a Bucky or not. But- but couldn't they read it? Couldn't they read it in English anyway? They, they can read yes. Kriyat Shema in English. Yes. So then, well, let's so say they don't know it at all. They don't have a book. They don't know it. They don't have a book. There's no sitter. So there's only one guy with a sitter. So what's that? Oh, it's the Shema. I don't know the words of the Shema. Let me read it for you. By the way, a separate question is, does the person have to understand the words of what you're reading? Let's say they don't. Oh, so they say to them, well, I could read you the Shema, but I'm going to read it to you in Hebrew. It's not the right language because you don't understand it. So I'm going to read it to you in English to be motzi, you know, can be yotze to mitzvah, mm-hmm. right? Generally, we hold by the by. Of course, you could daven in any language, but preferable. And the minute you saw, of course, the daven lashon kodesh. And usually, not always, but usually, we maintain uh, that if you don't know what you're saying, but you're saying lashon kodesh, but you have an awareness that that you are davening, good enough. Right? And Mr. Brewer goes along those lines, and others as well. You have to have at least an awareness of what you're that you that you're talking to Hashem, and uh, even if you don't know every word, and if you're doing a lashon kodesh, if you're doing it in a foreign language, then you have to know every word that you're saying. So I just came up. Yeah, Eddie, sorry, th- go ahead. Th- this came this came up before too, and then there's also got to be kavana that you're you're listening, even if you don't necessarily oh, yeah. understand. Yeah, if you're just there, you don't get credit for it if you just happen to be hearing. Nachon, nachon, nachon. Can't be mitasek or something. You're not paying attention. You have to you have to have kavana that you want to be yotza. Yeah, for sure. We're going to come to the Kavana question soon. We're coming to a, a related a topic of that. Um, the the pre Chadash and the Shagat Arye both think that Shmei Ka'ona works for Kriyat Shema. They think Shmei Ka'ona does work. The Mishnah Brura says that according to the Magen Avram and most Achronim, you could be Yotze as long as the person has Kavana to be Motzi you. And you have Kavana Latze. It's exactly what you're saying. So the Mishnah Brura actually Paskins that way. And it would be better to do so even than uh, than hear Hor. Hor is just thinking about it. Better to listen to it than to that that to someone else saying it than to just think about it. And why says the Mr. Bura? One reason: Shomea Keone. Or as the Mr. Bura thinks, based on the Magen Avram and most Achroni, that actually it does work. It actually does work. Um, the the uh, the Ola Tamid quoted there in the Mr. Bura, I believe it's in the Mr. Bura, says that actually you have to understand the language. Uh, uh, even if it's in Hebrew, you need to know what what's what's being said. But the the you know the, the, they have to understand the Shema has to understand the words that are being spoken. The Knesset Hakdola though adds against the the uh, the Olat Tamid, which is fascinating. He says no no that's only true if it's one person spotting another person to read it for them. But once you have a, a tzibur and a shaliach tzibur leading. That could be mostly other people, even if they don't understand. I mean, it's the power of community. It's a beautiful idea. Knesset uh, uh, says, even, or, or he says, and he gave you another example, a zimun in benching. Let's say there's benching. You have three who have to bench, three men, so they're going to make a zimun together. One could lead to benching for the other two. Why? Because you've created the proper minion, the proper unit that you need for a higher level of fulfillment. It's the tzibor. The tzibor in a community setting is 10. The tzibor at the table is three, so to speak. And therefore, even with a lack of understanding on the part of the two, the one could lead the other two in the benching, according to Knesset Agdola, without understanding. Again, it's debated, but at least just conceptually, you know, the question of how far does it go? You know, do, do they have to say the words and I have to know what they're saying or not? Now, why would Kriyat Shema be different anyway? Like, why are we making a big sense about Kriyat Shema? So the Radbaz writes, because the, the Torah says, Vishinantam Levanach, when you buy the word Vishinanta means, Lishanein Bafiha, you have to have it actually in your mouth, it has to be sharp in your mouth, it means you have to actually be the one to say it. Right? The Ramban says, Kriya Shema is a mitzvah that falls on each and every individual. Right? Uh, and, and therefore, the point is, it's on each and every individual, then every individual has to fulfill it. You can't give it to somebody else because they can't fulfill it for you. It's a particular unique mitzvah that you can't parcel out or even be in a partnership with someone else. 
right? This all leans toward the Chazon Ish, who said, you know, this that when it's al yedei kol echad ve'echad, every individual has to do it. There's no yachas now between me and another person because it's something that falls in everything. Vishinan tam levanecha means vishinan to you yourself, right? If it was like actual dibor, if, if really it's like the Beta Levi, and the Beta Levi, remember he holds, I'm not moving my lips, but I'm speaking now. That person's doing the vocalizing, but I'm speaking. I'm speaking like that's my speech. My 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 listening is my speaking. So then what's the difference? So then Kriyachma, the other person saying Kriyachma, I'm saying Kriyachma. I'm saying it. They happen to be saying it, and I'm saying it. In the Chazan Isha's way, I'm piggybacking, I'm connected to them somehow. So if you say, like the Ramban, it's a mitzvah, al kol echad ve'echad kriyachma, you can't give, you can't be with someone else in that mitzvah. Or like the Ramban's vishinantam. The Abu Darham writes, vidibartabam, uh, dibur, davka, the whole mitzvah is the dibur, right? Uh, he holds, by the way, that when it comes to benching, interesting, v'chadr svata uveirachta, there he thinks that it would work. That one could lead another, but not in Shema. Vidibarta dibor davka. The Gra and the Prima Gadim both uh, write that with regard to Kabbalah Omochut Shema, Shema Yisrael specifically, it's davka the dibor that matters. Why? Because it's Kabbalah Ol Malchut Shemayim. So just listening to the language spoken is not going to be good enough. You actually need a masa of Kriya, meaning the speaker themselves. The person who's actually doing the speaking has a greater level of kavana than a person who's just listening. They have to figure out what the words are that they want to say. The listener is just, I'm taking it in and I'm processing it that way. I'm thinking about it as a secondary point. So the, the, the gra and the prima gadim seem to say, for Kabbalah omachut shemai means I had a Kabbalah in my heart, which then got expressed verbally in that order. And you don't have that order if first you're hearing it and the intake, and that's what's causing you to think about it follow the need to, to to speak the words it means this higher level of kavana so, so how would that okay. what no no i was just going to say so going to eddie's you know question before we have a principle of mitzvah, mitzvah. okay so so if somebody so how can that person be if he's involved in in something else how could he be putter from kriyachma when kriyachma is midioraita and he should be. He should have. He shouldn't be putter from Kriyachma. Uh, that's a very important point you're making. I mean, it's it's a separate sugya though, because I know, know, I know. Yeah, uh, we have to bookmark that because I'm on a, on okay. a roll here. I got to move to Shmonesre. Okay, Kriyach forget Shmonesre. it. Shmonesre. but okay, but it's a very it. important point. Like, how does the Ozik Mitzvah Fundament so uh, work? <laughs> we talked about that a little bit. You might recall back a few blot ago. We talked about Ozik Mitzvah Patim Mitzvah. We had a whole sugya there. We did. We uh, did. Uh, uh, way back when, uh, in the uh, at the end of the Chafs, right? Uh, right. Chaf Zayin, Chaf Ched, about the travelers. Remember? Right. But we didn't. We're traveling, we didn't they're going places, and right. And Ozik Mitzvah Patim Mitzvah. We talked about a whole thing there, and there was Kriyachma was one of the issues that came up. And when you're going in Dvar Mitzvah, you're going for shoot. What takes precedence over what? So point well taken. Anyway, to sum about Kriyachma. It's a machloket. The Mishnah seems to say in the end, Shmei Kona works. It works for Kriyat Shema. Uh, maybe it's better to do it in a minion. And it seems to be really, really, it's only for someone who's not a Bucky. If you know how to say Shema, it seems Ruba de Ruba, you do need to say it yourself. You can't just ask someone else to do it. Because of the Kabbalah Melchut Shema, in fact, because of the Vidibartabam, the Shinantam, because of these realities of, uh, of it being connected to the, um, to the, to the, 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 the idea of the, of the of the of the speech of it, but again, there are others who disagreed. There were others disagreed and thought no, Shemei Ka'one would work just the same because it's a principle that works throughout. And it's a little bit again, if we want to plug it in again, it's kind of the beta lady against the Chazon Ish. Depending how you hold, will determine whether you'll permit Shemei Ka'one in this instance, right? Because how much of Shemei Ka'one is I'm connecting myself to another person? How much of Shemei Ka'one is what they're doing is really what I'm doing? I'm just doing the other side of it, which is the listening part. Yeah. Okay. I, I have a question. Oh, uh, uh, Yehuda, please. How do you translate what you just told us about Shema to our everyday minhag in Beit HaKnesset? Who is saying Shema loudly, except when you pull the Torah out of the Aron HaKodesh? Everybody says it to himself. Yes. True. The Chazan doesn't say it. That's I, correct. I, I want... The founding condition in the communities 
the Hazan repeat says the Shema aloud, word for word, with the people, with the trap, and everyone listens on to that until it comes Hashem uh, Emet. Everyone replies Emet that in effect whatever the Hazan has repeated is true, and there, as as uh, Rabbi Engel was implying, Shomer uh, Keone in this particular case is evidently a practice among this uh, Sephardic community. Did you ever see it, by the way, Benny? Did you uh, see it yourself? Yeah. Did you know, people would say the whole thing for everybody? Yeah, somebody would. You mean, did I ever see it for everybody? No, I, I wouldn't have that privilege. Ah, oh, I'm wondering. Yeah, so, but but that that's the idea, right? Is that yeah. that is that could happen now again in the Ashkenazi communities that pretty much never happens. The point is, let's say someone didn't know, and the sh- that the, the sitting next to somebody else, and that fellow saying Shema. You know, by the way, uh, where is it? Gemara Yuma, I think on uh, on Yud Tet points out that when it comes to Shema, you should be Mashmiel Oznacha. You have to hear what you're saying. We learned it it's years ago. Oh, we, we learned it. We learned it. In yeah. Yuma. So you have to listen loud yeah. enough. You could say it. Doesn't mean the whole war room has to hear it. Doesn't mean you're crowding out somebody else, like you're saying it's so loud you're interrupting somebody else. But the assumption is that you could say louder because everybody either has it in front of them in a text or they're they know it so well they're not going to get thrown off. But that everybody should say it. Now let's say I come to shul and I don't know how to say shema and the guy next to me is saying the shema or as Benny's point with shlech sibor, that's even more of a reason. They're saying the shema. And I love what you're saying, Benny. So you're telling me that and everyone says emet. They're repeating emet, meaning we accept what you said is true. That's amazing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Perhaps in earlier times, the Chazan said the Shema, and the Kahal answered him like they do in the Hallel. Baruch That's what Benny is saying right now. That's what Benny is saying. That's their minhag. In some of the Sephardic communities, that's what they do. That's what he just said. Yeah, I wasn't mm-hmm. aware. You know, but uh, the point of that's Shema Keona. People are reciting it together. Anyway, this is one thing Shema. Let's talk about Shmonesrei. So you remember the end of Masachat Rosh Hashanah, those who learned it not too long ago in the Daf, or even if you didn't, we had seen a piece of it. The Chachamim Rabbi Shimon Gamliel disagree. Uh, 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 they want to know, Rabbi Shimon Gamliel thinks that maybe the Shaliach Tzibur could emote see other people in Davin. You'd show up, stand quietly, someone else just read it, and you said it because you listened. Good enough. Not answering Amen to the Brachas. You literally just stood quietly and you listened. So the Chachamim disagree. They think that's only possible. Lamisha Eno Baki. That person, however, could be Yotze through their Chaver. But otherwise, you're obligated to Davin on your own. The, shliach, the Shulchan Aruch actually paskins this way in Simon Kuf Chaf Dalid. The Shliach Tzibur will emotzi someone who is an Eno Baki. They don't know how to Davin. The Magen Avram throws in that someone who is a Baki, you do know how to Davin, you would not be Yotze even Bediyavet. Uh-huh. Even Bidiyavet. Now, why not? So the Ran says, why not? Because tefillah is rachamim. And therefore, everybody has to ask for rachim on their own. If you're capable of it, doing it, you must do it. The Beit Yosef quotes in the name of uh, the Ritz Geot. The Ritz Geot says that you cannot be in a situation uh, uh, where an individual is davening loud enough that another individual can hear them. Because it has to be balachash. It's a halacha psuka. It has to be balachash. So how could you be doubting Shemana Sri quietly and someone else could be listening Shemaya Ke'one? So Rabbeinu Yerucham commenting on the Ritz Geod, he said, I disagree. You might be right in your critique if it's one person for another person. But if there are 10 people davening together and now you have a minion, so then the Shleach Tzibu is being motzi him. Even if Shleach Tzibu already finished davening, Yatza motzi. Even after the fact, what's Chazar Shatz? Chazar Shatz. We paskin, not like Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, but like the Chachamim, Chazar Shatz is not the main thing. It's after, it's not, the, the Rabbi Shimon Gamliel wanted to argue that the Tefillah Belachash is like getting ready for the main Tefillah, which is Tefillah B'Tzibur, which is the Tefillah of the Chazar, of the Shliach Tzibur. But the Chachamim said, no, it's the opposite, right? So, so he, Rabbi Yerucham says, fine. So when you finish Davin, you were Yotze, you got some Motzi. You were Yotze already. You could be Motzi, somebody who wasn't yet Yotze. Who's that? It's Misha Eno Baki. And of course, let's see who's going to say it out loud. So that's not a problem. So that's one, one approach. Um, the Tosfot, quoted in Rosh Hashanah, Lama Dalit, the Rosh also passes this way. What if you made a mistake in a Tefillah Yachid? You forgot Yalav Yavo. 
You have to go back and you have to daven again. But let's say hypothetically, you remembered, I forgot Yalav Yavo, you finished your whole davening already, and now, right before you start your Shemun Esrei, you hear the Shliach Tzibur start, Hashem, Sfatai, Tiftach, Ufi, Agit. So you put your feet together. Can you just listen in to everything the Shliach Tzibur says? Shliach Tzibur is going to say Yalav Yavo. Or no, you have to daven again. So they paskin, you do not have to go back and repeat Shemun Esrei a second time, even if you're a Baki. If you listen to every word of the Shliach Tzibur, uh, you would be Yotze. You know why? Because the first time you daven, it's true that technically you made a mistake. You forgot Yalav Yavo. And therefore, you do have to technically repeat it. But when you davened, were you Mavakesh Rachamim? Did you ask for Hashem's mercy? Sure you did. So now it's a technicality that you weren't Yotze. And therefore, you have to repeat for the technicality. Someone who isn't a Bucky in davening, doesn't know, would be Yotze in Shomei Ka'ona. You know why I say Tosvot? Because it would be a massive Tircha to cause them to have to be in a situation where a person would read f- three words and then they would say three words. Would read three words for them, they would repeat three words. Read, say three words, it's, it's a tircha. So to get, what Shemei Ka'ona say Tosfut Rosh Hashanah Lama Dalit, the Rosh Pasen way also, it's a tircha that's being obviated by a principle called Shemei Ka'ona. Instead of making the person who doesn't know how to read Hebrew, but understands how to speak Hebrew, that someone's going to read for them a few words, they're going to repeat after me, repeat after me, repeat after me, I'm going to read the whole thing. You're going to listen. That's what Shemei Ka'ona means. Therefore, they say, here also, if you already daven, you just, you're missing something technically. Not that you daven the wrong Shemei Ka'ona, but you daven, you just, you left something out. So now you can invoke Shemei Ka'ona. Instead of the tirch of having to say all the words over yourself, you could listen in. Now, I'm not suggesting that la la, we pass in that way, because the Shemei Ka'ona issue for Shemei Ka'ona is kind of complicated. You'd have to remember not to make a mistake and say anything. You have to keep your kavana. Uh, but technically, it would work. Uh, but don't try that at home. I would still say better to say your own, notwithstanding the day of Tosfot and of the um, and of the Rosh. It is interesting. So would you say, would you say it with? Could you say it with the Shaliyah Tzibor then? If you then realize, you're saying it. So you're saying it, and then you're not. Then you're saying it. it. Then you're saying it. Then you're saying it. But you may be familiar with that idea, which is that if you say it along with the Shaliyah Tzibor, there's cause to say that you actually get let's say, partial credit, if not full credit, for having davened with the minion. Even though the minion is not davening, you don't have 10 who are davening right now. There's only one, but that one is representing the 10. So that happens sometimes. You start Shemunat, you come to Shul, they're too far into Shemunat, right? You figure, I, there's no way I can start and finish Shemunat in time. And, um, I, and Meshki is coming, whatever it is. So you decide, okay, in that case, I'm just going to start Shemunat, right? With the Shleach Tzibor, you're piggybacking off the Shleach Tzibor, but that's not Shemei Ka'ona, because you're also saying all the words, right? And your recitation of the words, though, it's like you're saying the tefillah, like the Shleach Tzibor, and you're being Yotze, your mitzvah of tefillah, b'tzibor, because it's the tefillah of the tzibor. Um, we had Shema, Shemei third thing, brachot, brachot like this, Birkat Amazon, in the Yerushalmi, Masachet Brachot, it says three things, that you cannot, you have to say on your own. One is Kriyat Shema, another is Tefillah, meaning Shema Nasrei. We saw just now that's actually a big machloket. Is that forever? Or is that o- for everyone? Is that only if you are a Bucky? You have to say it on your own, but if you're ain't no Bucky. But the third one on the list is Birkat Amazon, right? Birkat Amazon also. The way that Yerushami seems to say, Kriyat Shema, Tefillah, and Birkat Amazon, all doesn't work for a Bucky, right? And if you look in the Gemara and Brachot in the, in the Bavli, it says that the point is Shemei Ka'ona is for someone who is uh, an ignoramus. They don't know. But once we get, I kind of said this already before, but once you get the Zimun together, so now one person can be Motzi, the other two, even if the other two are Bakiyam. And in fact, that's the Psak of the Shulchan Aruch. That's what Shulchan Aruch says to do. To have one person lead for the other two. Um, I mentioned this already a couple of times. We do this, uh, usually honored a little bit in the breach, um, you know, we'll say, like, let's say we have a minion, a shal or something. So the first bracha, at least, should be recited out loud. And some of a minute to recite all four brachot uh, till Ali Chasrein, the whole thing out loud. Now, all things being equal, if that person was a good enough reader, and if that was the minute, uh, in some places it is the minute, everybody just sits quietly and listens to the mezamein, the one who's leading the zimun, to read it all for them. And you don't say anything. You could say amen at the end of each bracha if you want. 
Maybe even that's not necessary. Shomeka Ona. Now the Taz says, um, not only is this true for benching, but sometimes this happens. You see this with the youth groups sometimes. Maybe it's at a Shul Kiddush even. We used to do this. We should get back to it. During the period where we were in a tent, it was much harder to do. That maybe it's not just benching, but maybe for a bracha achrona generally, if people are generally going to forget, say a bracha achrona, al michia, maybe even borene fashot. So maybe one can bench for all of them. Maybe one can say it and everyone will just say, you know, at the end, amen. You know, so they, I agree. And we said it. Not even clear that they have to say amen because it's Jamaica own it. Amen, by the way, is a way of saying, like, I heard you. I accept everything you say. It's like ratification. Yeah. So the Taz wants to go even, even that uh, that far. Not everyone agrees, but there's something that is exactly what we do. We have a crowd of people who say, oh, so-and-so is going to say Al-Mikha for everybody. It's a gr- youth group or something. Yeah, not everybody knows Al-Mikha by heart. You don't have a chart on the wall. You can't get to a sitter. It's a Shabbos. You don't have an app. So what do you do? One person will say it for everybody. No problem. That's what the Taz says. What about Modim? So we're familiar with Modim. The Abu Dram says that an Eved cannot give thanks to his master through a Shaliach. The Eved has to come on their own to the Adon and say, I, I, I thank you. And that's what, that's what Modim de Rabbanon is. When the Tzibor is reciting Modim of the community, so everybody else is another Modim, because he can't have someone else say it for you, right? When it comes to Kabbalah, Omochut Shamayim, maybe the Mishaleach, the one who's sending someone else, will say, I didn't really send him. You know, I don't accept it so much. I'll send someone else. So uh, when it, we're talking about Bakashot, though, we're talking about requests that are being made, so we don't, we're not worried about that, says the Abu Dram, because uh, the, the Bakashot or the Tova of the Mishaleach, he's not going to deny that he sent the Shaliach to represent him. So when it comes to Bakasha, there can be someone representing him. When it comes to Kabbalah Mochut Shemaim, you can't have a Shaliach, you have to do it on your own. And therefore, the idea of Modim also, it's like you're accepting uh, Hoda'a, meaning thanksgiving, but Hoda'a, meaning also an element of confession or submission, acknowledgement. Hashem is running everything. Modim Anach Nulach. So you can't consign it to somebody else. You have to do it on your own. And therefore, in a certain way, it seems to be arguing a little bit like almost Shemek Ona would not be operative. Shemek Ona would not be operative. We just finished saying a person not a Bucky. Let's say you weren't a Bucky and you came to a shul and they were saying davening. You wouldn't say Modim de Rabbanon, would you? I think you'd still say to Modim that the uh, Shlach saying, I think. Tzarech Ian. That's just sort of in the mix. Last subject, Sfirat HaOmer. Sfirat Omer is a mitzvah of Dibor. Is there Shemei Ke'onah in, 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 in Sfirat Omer? Practically seems not. You go to shul, I go to shul. The rabbi makes the bracha. First of all, everybody says amen. And then what does everybody do? They say the bracha. So I remind you, it's the same thing like with Hallel. The rabbi has kavana, Shiloh Lahotzi, at Arabim. And the people who are reciting the bracha afterward, hopefully have kavana, Shiloh Latzeit, in the bracha of the person they're listening to. But if they didn't have that kavana, the stam is that they have kavana, they're yotze, and they don't say the bracha again. So the bracha is recited, and then who counts? Every single person counts. Why? Why can't the shlech tzibor just say it for everybody? The rabbi, the shlech tzibor, the it rabbi. Says svartem, it says in Svartem Lachem, uh, uh, it's Omer. Same, oh. is true, same is true with, with Etro. Oh, Lachem, free oh excellent. You like, you got, you, you've been to the shir already. <laughs> exactly. The Lavush and the Chok Yaakov say, Usfartim lachem, based on the Gemara, means everybody's got to say it, right? But you know what? There are people who think at least Bidiyavich Mekeona would work. You know why? Because maybe the words Usfartim lachem mean, Usfartim means the Jews themselves have to do it. Every Jew means every Jew directly, or maybe every Jew through Shemekeona, as opposed to Visafarta lecha which is the, the way that the Torah describes the count for Yovel, which is done not by every Jew, but only by the Beit Yin HaGad in Yerushalayim. There's one count for the whole Jewish people. So there's a whole other, the pre Chadash actually argues this practically. He says, wait a minute, maybe at least B'diyavid HaShemek Ke'ona for Sfirat Omer. Maybe the words of Sfirat and Lachem are not as everyone seems to understand it, Lachem, each and every individual, but maybe it means L'Chatchila, everyone should count, but B'diyavid, if one person counted, Shemei Ke'ona means, certainly according to the Beta Levi, I am saying it. I'm just not moving my lips right now, but I'm saying it. Or according to the Chazanish, I'm saying it because he's saying it and I'm connected to that person. So the Bir Halacha picks up this subject, the Bir Halacha in, in Tough Pei uh, Tet. 
And he points out um, the question of the Rajba. The, the Rajba asks the following question. He says, if you look at the at the at Rashi there on the Gemara when it says Usfart and Lachem, which seems to imply it's the mitzvah of the Rabbim, Rashi writes there, Shekol Echad Chayav Lispor, everyone must count. But how did Rashi come up with that idea? Maybe Usfart and Lachem, which the Gemara calls a mitzvah of the Rabbim, just means that in every shul they have to do it across the country. Not that every individual has to do it. So the Rashba says, no, you know where Rashi got the idea from? Because it's not Usfartem. Usfartem Lachem. Every individual is found in the word Lachem. You need to all count, and you each need to count. So the Bir Halacha concludes that according to the Rashba, there's no such thing as Shemeya Ke'one for Sfirat Omer because Usfartem Lachem Davka. And that's exactly what Eliyahu Zuta quotes in the name of the Aguda, another one of the Rishonim, and cannot be a Tzibor for everybody counting. It just doesn't work. But the Ritz Geot, he threw a monkey wrench into the process. Why? The Ritz Geot writes that on Saturday night on Motzei Shabbat in Shul, when it's time for Sfirat HaOmer on Motzei Shabbat, he says as follows. He says the people are seated in their shuls. We don't do it this way in our shuls, so I guess it's kind of moot, but at least in the Sephardic shuls, the people are sitting down when they say V'yinoam and when they say V'yatak Kadosh. So that whole section after the Amidah, they're sitting down. Only the Shliach Tzibur is standing, and therefore he says the Shliach Tzibur will recite the Brach of Sfirat HaOmer for everybody. So says the Bir Halacha, if they have to stand for Sfirat HaOmer, because as you know, the Halacha is the Count Sfirat HaOmer, you have to be standing Ma'chel Chermesh Ba'kama Everyone has to be standing when they recite Sfirat Omer. So what is the savings here? You're telling, you're telling me that only Shlach Tzibur is going to make the brachas. He's standing. He'll say, Everyone's going to say, Amen. Then they're going to have to stand up and count. So just make them stand up for the bracha. Unless everyone else is remaining seated. And because the bracha here of Sfirat Omer by the Shlach Tzibur who's standing will also include the counting. In fact, the Orchot Chaim says exactly this, name of Rav Hai Gaon, that maybe in fact there is Shemei Ke'one when it comes to, so you have a Gaonic source, that maybe there really is Shemei Ke'one when it comes to Sfirat HaOmer. The Ramban makes Ira's point, a little, a few hundred years before Ira, but it's exactly Ira's point. Usfartem Lachem is in the same chapter of the Torah, Perach Gimel, right next to the mitzvah, Ulekachtem Lachem, and that's every individual. You cannot hand your love to someone else and say, I'm tired. Shake it for me. No, Lukachtem Lachem means every individual. Lukachtem means every community, maybe. Lachem means every individual, however you want to darshan it, but it's everybody. Yet, it could be that you could be do, you, you could be docha this by saying, no, maybe also Lukachtem Lachem means only Yechidim and not the Beit Gadol. You know, it's, it's obvious that someone can't be motzi you in this action mitzvah to do it with, to do it for you. There's, there's no such thing. It's a personal mitzvah. Again, the formulation here, and it goes on and on and on, all these discussions, the formulation would be like this. According to the Chazon Ish, it's not Shemei Ke'one, right? When it's Kol Echad Ve'echad, because there's no Hit Yachasut, there's no connection between the people. According to the Beit HaLevi, it's like you're speaking, and therefore, Kimedaber Ba'atzmo, so Kol Echad Ve'echad, doesn't literally mean every individual. Maybe kol echad ve'echad just means every person has fulfilled the mitzvah, but not they literally have to say the words. There's a question here. Um, there's a question uh, here also with regard to the Ritz Geot, where he said, you know, everybody's seated and only one person's going to stand and that one person's going to say it. So uh, that sounds exactly like the Chazonish, right? Because if the Mashmia is standing, they're sitting. So let's say you go according to the Beta Levi. The Beta Levi would say, oh, if someone else is saying it, it's like I'm saying it. Yeah, but if they're standing, is it like I'm standing? No. I'd still have to stand up to listen properly. But according to the Chazon Ish, I'm connected to that person and that person is doing the right thing. They're standing, they're taking the three steps back, they're bowing and they're saying the words. And it's like I'm saying the words because I'm with them. But it doesn't really mean literally I'm saying the words. You follow? 
So these other little technical elements, we saw examples of this before. We talked about, you know, let's say someone's saying the Shmanesra for you. So who takes the three steps back? Do you also have to? Let's say someone's saying Kiddush for you. So does everyone have to hold a kos? Or one person holds the kos? We know what the minig is, other than Pesach. Everyone holds everyone holds the kos? One person holds the kos. It represents everybody. So it doesn't sound more like the Chazanish, not like the Beta Levi? So the Beta Levi could argue, no, the kos is in the room. Yeah, but you're not holding it. You have to hold the kos, not on the table. And so on and so forth. All right? So, uh, 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 you know, Usfaritam uh, means called Echad Ve'echad. If we mean it literally, we're still left with a problem. Right, the Chazan Ish will say, "No, you know, you're not literally saying anything. Don't worry." And the Beit Levi says, "Well, why isn't the Shemaya standing up?" Right, and so and so on and so forth. It just keeps going, going, uh, going around and around. Okay. Um, now, if it's according to the Chazan Ish, so it's the connection of the Shemaya and the Mashmia, and therefore the close identification between the two people. That's inclusive of an Amida that's going on, or maybe the Ritz Geot. He doesn't hold to this drush of Svartim Lachem Kolachem Be'achad, meaning what Rashi says it means. Maybe he thinks who Svartim Lachem means, like the Gemara says, that it's a mitzvah of the rabbi, means every shul has to have it done. And it's not about every individual saying it all together. And therefore, the Sheikh Tzibur could just recite it. And then the Beta Levi would be uh, repatriated, if you will. Now, um, and again, it could be that the whole question of the Machlok and the Sfirat HaOmer and Shemir Ka'one just turns on one question that drusha. What does kol echad ve'echad mean? You know, the Rajba thinks it's kol echad ve'echad literally. Uh, according to others, it just means that not the Beit Yin HaGadol won for the whole nation, but it means one in every shul, one in every community, maybe. The Dvar Avram, last thing for tonight and last thing on this topic, asked the following question. He said, what is Sfirat HaOmer? Is Sfirat HaOmer an act of counting and declaring what day it is? Or is it something deeper? Is Sfirat HaOmer perhaps the knowledge and the awareness of what day it is, which is then translated into a verbal expression as a result of that da'at. Now, what's the nafkamina between these two? It sounds like saying the same thing twice. The nafkamina is what about a sphera out of a suffix, right? So it, it would not be enough to just say, well, I said it's day four and it, or it's day five. So I said it. And the day that it's not, let it just be lopped off. That doesn't work. You know why? Because you have to internalize your awareness of time and then speak it out. And maybe the chiddush of kol echad ve'echad, every individual has to recite the sphira is exactly that. You're clarifying, you're defining the day by your awareness of it and then expressing it verbally. And shumei ke'one isn't operative for that because shumei ke'one is in the opposite direction. First you hear it and then you process it. Again, it's almost like Dvar Avram, you could say it's like a variation we said before about Kriyat Shema, that first it's a, a, the, what the Grad said, first it's internal and that after that, then you can verbalize it not backwards. Yeah, it's Kabbalah and Mochachamayim goes sort of in that direction. Maybe the same thing also for, uh, for Sfirat HaOmer. Anyway, 10 minutes over time, I think is way over time enough. This was the topic of Shemaya Ke'one. It's, I think, the most, the longest we've spent on any sugya, certainly this year, going into different permutations, etc. There's always more to say. Whew. Next week, God willing, we will move on in the sugya, in the Gemara. We're actually in the Gemara on Lamitet Amid Aleph. Uh, we'll pick it up there, God willing. Let's stop here because I still have to go to a boys bar mitzvah group now on Zoom, granted. Thanks for learning. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining. And everyone just keep well. We'll see you, God willing, uh, soon enough. Back in shul. Well,